Welcome back to the History of Bodybuilding. Joining me as always is John Hansen. Uh, John, uh, we have uh, a request. We had a, a lot of requests actually for more history of bodybuilding. People seem to love right. the history. No one seems to know it. It's amazing, right? Right. I know. It's a shame. It's a shame that uh, a lot of people today don't know the history of bodybuilding. I think that's really bad. Yeah. So we're educating them one show at a time. One All of right. the uh, <laughs> most controversial shows, uh, I think, back in the 70s was the 71 NABBA universe, and which then took place just prior to the uh, 71 Mr. Olympia, which Arnold won unopposed. And right. uh, there was a lot of gossip. So give us the lead up to, and first of all, explain to maybe some of the viewers who don't understand the, the, the different organizations. Explain NABBA versus the IFBB and at, at that time what the dynamic was. Yeah, the IFBB started their Mr. Olympia in 1965. And uh, the goal was to show who was the best bodybuilder in the world. But at that time, the IFBB was not as big as the NABBA Universe, which had started in 1950. Mm -hmm. So all the great champions always went over to London every year to compete in the NABBA Universe. You had Steve Reeves, you had Reg Park, you had Bill Pearl, uh, Frank Zane. Arnold had won it already, I think, five times, four times. So this was, this was the premier event. You know, After the Mr. America contest, Mr. America winner would always go over to London to compete in the NABBA Universe. Gotcha. And then you would have all these other countries competing. So they also had an amateur division and a pro division at the NAVA Universe. So all the guys who won at the amateur level would move up to the pro. Gotcha. So it really was the who's who of bodybuilding. You had the best right. bodybuilders in the world. Who, who promoted that show back then? Oscar Heidenstam. Gotcha. Yeah. And it was always held at the same auditorium in uh, London. And it was always around September. And up until that point, you know, the Mr. Olympia had only had like three competitors in it every year, or maybe four competitors. It was not the biggest show. And so around 1971 now, um, Joe Weider wanted to make the IFBB Mr. Olympia the biggest contest in the world. So he figured the best way to do that was he was going to suspend anybody from the IFBB who competed outside the IFBB and went over to Napa. Oh, wow. So that was the year that all this took place. Now, which is interesting because originally the Mr. Olympia was set up so that all the former Mr. Universe champions can square off at one place, right? Right. But it was more IFBB Mr. Universe. Gotcha. He was trying, you know, when they held the first Mr. Olympia in 1965, he tried to get Reg Park to come over to it and Bill Pearl. But those guys at that time, they didn't really trust Weeder. Uh -huh. You know, Weeder was known as kind of a, a shyster businessman and... Right. They didn't really trust the IFPB, so they stuck with NABA. Gotcha. So, what a what a big mistake that was. <laughs> <laughs> so, seventy one comes around. Bill Pearl is is this going to be his last show at forty one years old? Yeah, Bill Pearl had won three NABA universes. He won in uh, fifty three. Um, I think it was sixty seven and maybe sixty one. And now he was going for his last Mr. Universe. But which, what makes it interesting, he wrote an article in Iron Man magazine. And he said, this is going to be my last Mr. Universe contest. This is my, my last contest, period. Right. Because I'm going to be 41 years old. And I'm inviting anybody who wants to beat me to show up in London and compete against me. It was an open challenge wow. to everybody. That's awesome. And so, of course, Arnold, Arnold was very competitive. Arnold wanted to prove himself the best. Right. And Arnold had already won... Uh, four NABBA universes from 67 right. when he won the amateur and then 68, 69, and 70 he was a three-time professional winner. So of course he was going to go over in 71. Sure. And then Joe Weider told him, no Arnold, you can't go because oh. we have this new rule. So Arnold was very, very disappointed in that. So it wasn't like Arnold, Arnold wasn't afraid of Bill Pearl. He just he just was, you know, a Weider athlete and he was in the IFBB and they didn't want him doing it, basically. Right, right. Now, there was also rumors that Leo Stern, who was uh, Bill Pearl's coach, mm. he helped him with his uh, preparation and also his posing. He told Weeder, he goes, my boy's going to get your boy in London. Oh, you know? really? Yeah. <laughs> so, now, Joe Weeder knew Leo Stern was not a bullshitter. Yeah. And I think he may have been a little afraid of that. So maybe that's also the reason why they started this rule, because right. it would have been terrible for the IFBB if they're – you know, current Mr. Olympia got beat by Bill Pearl. Was Leo Stern the same guy who owned all those airplanes? And, you know, was he that guy? 
No, that was I know you're talking about. That wasn't Leo Stern. No. What's the, that was something Stern. What was his last name? Uh, Ray, Ray Stern. Stern. Ray Stern. I'm yeah. confusing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Bill Pearl goes over now. 41 years old was old back then. Like guys yeah. weren't competing in 41. It wasn't like today where everyone's 40 years old. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So yeah, that was cool. and, and Bill was uh, he was at his best that year. I think he was 243 pounds at five foot ten. Which wow! Was huge back in seven. Yeah, and big chest, arms, delts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, freaky. Looking. And he was he was really loved by the Naba judges. You know, the Naba judges really loved him. So the debate is going on till today on what what would have really happened if it would have been Arnold versus Bill Pearl. Because even though Arnold was only twenty four years old and Bill Pearl was forty one, um, you know, I don't know which way the judges would have went. They right. might have went with Bill Pearl. Pearl had a lot more muscle maturity probably than Arnold. Because Arnold probably wasn't his best at that point, right? Arnold was really good in 71. He beat Sergio in uh, 1970. And he made even more improvements in 71. I think he was close to 250 pounds. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. And his legs were really improved. Uh, he was really he was really ready for battle. Because he was he was expecting to face Bill Pearl and uh, Sergio Oliva again. Right. So... It's and, and he was defending the title for the Mr. Olympia for the first time. So, you know, he wanted to be at his best. Now, it's, what's interesting is in 71, Bill Pearl um, had to go up against Sergio, who showed up. Right. And Reg Park was there as well, right? Right, right. Which, and then Frank Zane went in the short class. They had a short class and a tall class in the pro division. And so Zane, Frank Zane had won the amateur the year before at the Navi Universe. Uh -huh. So now he was going in the professional. Uh, Zane had not competed in the Olympia yet. He didn't feel like he was ready for that. Right. And then uh, Sergio was going into the Navi Universe for the first time ever. Oh. So at the time, now this is another backstory. He was being trained by Arthur Jones, who ran Nautilus. Right. And Arthur had had a falling out with Bill Pearl. He wanted him to promote his Nautilus equipment. So he had sent some of the equipment to Bill Pearl's gym in Pasadena. Right. And, uh, I think Bill changed the design of it or something. There was a curl machine, and oh, really? he, he wanted to make some changes to it. <laughs> and and uh, Arthur Jones got really pissed off at him. He was going to sue him. Oh, my God. And uh, he hated Bill Pearl from that point forward. <laughs> so then he got Sergio Oliva to be his guy, and he wanted Sergio Oliva to beat Bill Pearl That's at, the Mr. Olympic, at the Mr. Universe. Yeah. How do you think Sergio looked uh, compared to you know when he was at his best? Well, Sergio was an unbelievable bodybuilder. His problem was that um, he would come in smooth. He wouldn't diet enough, you know. And I talked to some people, including Peter McGuff and uh, Wayne Galash from Australia, who right. were actually there at the show. And they said uh, Sergio looked incredible. Like Peter said, when Sergio came out and hit a front double bicep, he went back in his chair. He just couldn't believe a guy could look like that. You right. Know? But I think he was a little too smooth. Wayne Glass told me that he was holding water, maybe from the flight, or he just wasn't cut enough. And he said Bill Pearl was like perfectly, you know, prepared. He had the tan, he was big, he was full, he was cut, he posed perfectly. And in Bill Pearl's book, he told this story that's hilarious. He said he was backstage and everybody's pumping up, getting ready. And there's people walking around, there's officials and stuff, judges. Uh, fans, photographers, and this little kid goes up to Sergio and he asks him for an autograph. Yeah. Sergio goes, get out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm pumping up. Get out of here. You know. <laughs> so the kid walks away dejected. Bill Pearl sees this. He grabs the kid, yeah. puts him on his shoulder, tells uh -huh. his dad to take a picture, signs his autograph. And then later on when the prejudging starts, they walk up on stage. Bill Pearl looks out. And that father is one of the judges. Oh, no way. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he looks at Bill Pearl and he smiles like oh this. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, they, uh, Sergio did, it was done after that. I thought you were going to tell me, like, the young kid was, like, Dorian Yates or something like that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah, that, that, it's not a good idea. I didn't, what should we call it? I think, uh, didn't we talk about that um, Samir did something like that also? Like some judge asked him for like an autograph, and they yeah, signed yeah, six thousand yeah. autographs, and then the one he, and then he signed, then he gave him eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So Sergio actually went and did the Olympia the week after against Arnold, right? Oh no, he didn't. Oh, he wanted to do the Olympia, right? Yeah. So Sergio ends up taking second to Bill Pearl. He's really disappointed. That was in London. One week later, the Mister Olympia was being held in Paris, and Serge Dubray was the promoter. Right. 
So Sergio flies over, not realizing that he's going to be suspended. He gets there and they tell them, you know, you're suspended. You can't go on the show. Ugh. But they said, if you sign a letter of apology to the IFBB, we'll let you guest post for oh free. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I, you know, you think, you hear politics nowadays. It's like it, it was way, 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 way worse back then. Yeah, yeah. And then Franco also was there. Franco wanted to compete. And they suspended Franco. Because oh, they really? said he was in a professional show, I think, or something. I don't, they had some, the, their rules back then were so crazy. Yeah. They would make up stuff, you know, like what the, you were suspended for. The funny thing, for. John, was there was no one in the freaking show. It was only Arnold in the Olympia, no. right? So Arnold ends up winning the contest unopposed. He's the only How one. How anticlimactic. They couldn't throw it, let Sergio do the show at the last minute. I mean, it was, I it was like ridiculous, the whole thing. And what makes it worse is they let Sergio guest close so the audience gets to see him. Right. And now they have to wonder who would have won, right. you know, Arnold or Sergio. Right, 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 right. There were, well, you know, Weeder was protecting their guy, Arnold, you know, for listening right. to them. He, they wanted to send a message that, hey, Arnold listened, didn't do the NAB universe. Look at him. He's Mr. Olympia now. You guys yeah. didn't listen. You didn't. Do, you don't get to do the show. The only reason we let right. Sergio guest pose is because we didn't want the audience to leave. That's why, probably. Right. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. What crazy, what crazy politics went back. And and the funny thing was there was no social media. There was no internet, so there wasn't like people can get online and express their outrage. Right. You waited three months. You read the magazines, and all you read was the article that they wanted you to read. So, yeah, you really never got the true backstory until much much later. You know. Yeah, they held the IFBB Mr. Universe also that night. So if you ever see pictures of Sergio posing, there's a curtain behind him and it'll say 1971 Mr. Universe. Oh. That's the contest because they held it. I, oh, and Albert Bechtel okay. won the Mr. Universe that night in the amateur. And a couple of the guys that were in the NAVA Universe, they were also not allowed to come over and compete. So, so it stupid. was really messed up. When do you think that, what year would you say that the IFBB established its dominance over NAVA? When did that happen? Well, actually, the next year in 1972, they have probably had their biggest Mr. Olympia ever because Sergio came back and he was in the greatest shape of his life in 1972. It was held at Essen, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, Arnold beat him, but that's a very controversial Mr. Olympia. A lot of people felt he shouldn't have beat him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frank Zane went in it. Um, Franco went in it and also Serge Nubre. So you had a really good lineup of five good guys. And uh, I think after that, also, Arnold stopped competing in the in the Navi universe and right. also Bill Pearl stopped competing. So I think it's kind of went down in quality after that. Right. And I would say by by the 1980s, for sure, the Navi universe had lost, I think, most of their prestige that it had. Sure. Because most of the people were going now over to the IFBB. What, what were they giving away for the Olympia at that time? Was it still only a thousand bucks? Thousand dollars. Yeah. And there's a famous picture of Arnold counting the money. <laughs> after first the great game because he gave him a, a wad of cash so he's counting the money you know you, you think that Weida would have put up more money just to say hey guys why are you going to compete in NABA we're going to get we're giving away 10 grand you know because which would have been a lot yeah. of money back then or something well actually the NABA universe didn't give out any prizes at all it was all amateur even the pro division was still amateur oh, they wow. just gave you the trophy you know that's funny yeah it's amazing the relevancy like you know like and those guys probably a thousand bucks was like holy mackerel I hit it I hit it big you know a thousand bucks I won you know well, there's another funny story, too, of that NABA universe I forgot to tell you. Frank Zane won the amateur in 1970, so he competed in his first pro NABA universe in 1971. Right. They had two classes. They had a short class and a tall class. So Frank won the short class easily. There was nobody in it against him. Uh, a couple guys, but he was easily, easily won it. Yeah. And uh, he was in really, really good shape. Now, normally what they would do is they would take the short class and the tall class and pose down against each other for the overall title. Sure. They didn't even do that. Oh, really? They just, they just had all the guys backstage, and they announced Bill Pearl the winner, so they didn't even compare him. So that goes to show you the prestige that Bill Pearl had. Right. And there was another incident during the prejudging. I think Bill Pearl's best side was his left side. Right. And they were doing, they were doing quarter turns, front, left, back, side, uh, right. So they turned to the, to the left, and then they turned to the back, and this is the whole lineup. And then they go to the right. And Bill goes to the left again. <laughs> so he's facing the competitors. They're looking at yeah. him. He's looking at that. Yeah. So the judge goes, Mr. Pearl, we need to see your right side. Bill looks at the judge and goes, don't be difficult. 
<laughs> and the guy just goes, okay. <laughs> that that that's uh that doesn't happen anymore, that's for sure. No, no. When Weinberger yells at those guys, they 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 flip around real quickly, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> crazy. The crazy, crazy uh I guess uh, golden years of the seventies where anything and everything went on and all the drama really took place behind the scenes between the weeders right. and this group and that group and yeah. It's amazing how it all, you know, kind of ironed out in the end, you know. I, I think Weeder's hold on the magazine, you know, industry really played a big part in these guys wanting to see themselves showcased in a magazine in, in, in a great way. I Don't you think that that really is why a lot of the guys decided to stick with Weeder? Yeah, that's a good point because at that time, that's when the magazines were really starting to grow in prestige and Weeder had the most showy magazine, you know, yeah. the most flashy magazine. And he really promoted all those guys from the IFBB as superstars. So I think, yeah, that did help a lot, a lot. But, it, you know, you look back at it now, it's like um, 50 years ago. And, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, it's a shame that we didn't get to see more showdowns between Arnold and Sergio. I know. I and, know. and I would love to have seen Arnold versus Bill Pearl. I mean, oh, that would have been so, such a classic showdown. I mean, Arnold trying to psych out Bill Pearl. And, <laughs> you know, it just would have been amazing. And, the two great physiques, they were two both awesome bodybuilders. I think Arnold probably would have won. He had more definition at that point. He had really good legs. Yeah. Uh, he really brought up his legs that year, and he was really big. You know, if you see the pictures of Arnold training in 1971, he was really, really big. Did, did, Arnold, ever really wind up, did Arnold ever wind up squaring off against uh, Reg Park, who was his hero? Yeah, the year before, in 1970, okay. uh, Arnold competed against Reg Park, and he beat him and he beat Dave Draper to win the Napa Universe in 1970. Yeah. And he, he tried to psych out Reg Park, and I guess they had a kind of falling out after that. Oh, really? And that was his hero, too. You know, he always said, yeah. That, you know. Yeah, the story I heard is they were backstage and Arnold was talking to him and talking to him about this and talking about that. And Reg said, Arnold, shut up. I'm trying to prepare for the contest. Yeah. And Arnold goes, what contest? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I guess they had that. But, you know, again, you have a 23-year-old Arnold in that show competing against a 41-year-old Reg Park. So, right, right. Reg was not at his best. Ar and Arnold was, knew how to get on the people, in people's nerves. Like, he knew, he assessed the person and what their weaknesses were, and he would yeah. get under their skin. Like, you know, Menser, he did that. He did that with a lot of guys, you know. Louis, yeah. he, he knew exactly who, how to poke the person to get them all you know, to get them aggravated. And, you know, aggravation right. causes, you know, fluid retention, and then you start questioning yourself. And so right. he was a master at that. Obviously, stuff like that doesn't really go on today, nowadays. But uh, back then, it was a, there was a lot of psychological warfare, it seemed like, backstage. But I don't know if it would have worked against Bill Pearl. I mean, Bill Pearl was a man's man. And yeah. He was, uh, he was in control of himself. And, yeah. uh, you know, Arnold was much younger than him. Right. Uh, Bill was an established champion for many, many years. Yeah. I don't think... I don't think he would have got to Bill Pearl, so it would have been really interesting to see what would have happened. Too bad there were no people with, with iPhones backstage back then. The, the, the stuff that you would have gotten from Arnold would have been golden today to watch, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, John, I appreciate the, uh, the great historical uh, stories. That we, I, I love them, you know, because I, I, know I know the outlines of the stories, but I don't, really, I don't know all the gossip. You really read into it. I know you read a lot of books and stuff like that. And, articles yeah. old uh, magazine articles and so it's nice to bring it up and to educate you know the young people in the sport let them know where their sport came from and all the all the drama that went on behind the scenes back then and what helped mold the sport into what it is today because that's really what it amounted to yeah absolutely i mean i think a lot of people know who arnold is of course but i mean bill pearl was a great legend sergio mm -hmm. oliva was an unbelievable bodybuilder for his time and even today if you look at pictures of him so if people don't know about that, they're really kind of missing out yeah. on uh, the history of the sport. There were some really great battles and some great bodybuilders and, uh, yeah, some really great stories. Thank you very much. Once again, for another installment of the History of Bodybuilding, I'm Dave Palumbo with John Hansen. We'll see you next time.